Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go into part three of our island tutorial and uh, hopefully we can get this wrapped up. Um, we're a little a little uh, off from the, uh, the original sample image that I came up with but that's that's a lot of work that went into that so trying to compress all that down into a tutorial is a little difficult but we'll see what we can do. Uh, now uh, at the end of part two I was like well, I don't see very much grass, but no big deal. And I figured that out is because I had, uh, I had failed to change the material settings there when I created the grass uh, materials particle system. So this is actually what it should look like. So that those little sprigs of grass there actually look a lot better there. So um, okay, now got a little bit more time to work with now, so that'll be easier than trying to squeeze it into part two. Uh, something I'd like to do is. If we notice in our, excuse me, our uh, sample image, we got a little bit more variation on the, on the little mountains back here. So, I'd like to go ahead and do that now. Uh, let's turn off all of these particle systems, so I can see the actual island a little bit better. So, let's uh, grab the sculpt mode, and draw is already turned on. So let's set the radius down a little bit, strength up, and let's just come in here. And maybe, is it doing anything? It is not. Okay. Oh, I got the ocean selected on accident again. <laughs> Select the island. Landscape. There we go. And sculpt mode. There we go. I'll do that. Make it smaller. A little bit less strong. Just kind of come in here. And just randomly... Maybe instead of drawing, I'll just uh, go, in, uh, go into sculpt mode. Actually, I'm in there already. Get the grab tool, make it a little bit bigger. Just kind of grab, instead of trying to draw this straight line, we'll just grab. It'll be a little bit more natural looking once we get it. Okay, so you can just kind of just push and pull wherever you feel like you need to change the the topology of the terrain. Okay, I'll go ahead and call that a day on that one. And let me go ahead and save this as part three now. Oops, part three. Save. Okay. And let me go ahead and do a test render just to see what the, see if this is look, looks okay, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, well that's looking good, but I think that mountaintop needs to be a lot higher. So if we look at our reference again, uh, you can see that we got some hills in here and then that tall mountain. So uh, real quick, let's jump in here and let's uh, let's just go into edit mode, make sure our proportional fall off is turned on. Go to our top view so we can get in here a little bit quicker. And let's grab these guys right here. And then we'll just drag those up about like so. Maybe grab that guy, move him up some. Okay. So I think this might look a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. So, go ahead and save that, go and render out, be right back with the render results, so stand by. Okay, yeah, I'm looking, I'm like that a lot better, that looks, looks a lot better, I think. Um, one thing that I noticed in the reference is there's a lot more rocks around, laying around, so, um, let me go ahead and escape out of this render here, we'll throw some more rocks in there, and then we'll be done tweaking the scene then we'll go on with the the other stuff I promised you the atmospheric perspective and things like that so let's go and escape out one time let's turn on our rocks layer and go to, over to our particle system here under rocks and emission let's go ahead and set that up quite a bit more I say quite a bit let's make it uh, 1200 okay and then eh, maybe maybe 1500 let's make it 1500 and then we'll come down here under physics and maybe make the rocks a little bit bigger about 0.2 and maybe set the random down just a little bit and let's play with the seed a little bit more so 
Let's go back to uh, 14. I think I like the looks of that one. Okay, let's go ahead and save that one. And one final test render, and then we'll call the tweaking session done, and we'll we'll get on with it. So let's see what it looks like real quick. Okay, so there we are. The uh, honestly, the rocks don't look quite as good as I'd hoped, but like I said, we'll quit we'll quit dinking with it for now. Let's go ahead and escape out, and let's turn that layer up. Ah, it's bugging me. I'll just go back down to let's go back down to ten. Anyways, okay, we'll go ahead and save that, and let's turn that off so it's not staring me right in the face. Okay, now um, bring them back the source image, not source image, but the comp. Now you notice that. Uh, the closer the island is to the camera, the more distinctive it is. And the further you get away there on the ocean as well, it kind of starts fading out. Now in Blender, that's called a mist setting. Uh, but us artists refer to that as atmospheric perspective. So it means like the moisture in the air, the further you get away, uh, the thicker it gets or appears to be. So that's kind of what gives it that uh, illusion. Or not the illusion, but uh, in real life, that's what causes the phenomenon I guess anyways uh, so we can duplicate that here in blender by we turn on our camera or grab our camera to go over to our camera settings you turn on the display the mist and now if we come out here to the side view you can see this orange line appears if you turn that on and off you can see and that is the distance the mist is going to cover it's going to start right here and it's going to end here so it's going to start getting fuzzy here but by the time you get to this part it's going to be completely whited out. So uh, we don't want it quite that thick over the islands. So we'll go to, to our world settings now. Scroll down here to mist. And we turn that on. Uh, see it starts at 5. So if you wiggle that, you can see it change. So let's make it start at about, let's make it start at 7. And then we'll set the depth a little bit further out. Let's make that 40. So we're going to start at 7 and end at 40. So if we were to render now, just real quick, let me turn off all these guys so we don't have to wait on it forever. Um, go ahead and hit F12. And we turn that mist settings on there, right there, under our world settings. So I'll go ahead and let you watch some of the render here. And you can already see the top of the mountain is kind of blurred out a little bit. And as you get further down, uh, closer to the camera, the shoreline, it looks a little bit more clear, more sharp. Okay, Blender crashed on me, so let's <laughs> start back where we were. Luckily, we, luckily, we just saved it after we messing with the rocks there. So let me go ahead and turn those off again, and then turn all these guys off so they don't render. And then, like I said, let me go ahead and turn off the subsurf as well. Why not? Uh, make sure missed. Okay, got to set all that back up, I suppose. Love those crashes. Not really. Turn on mists, okay. Mist settings starting at 7, ending at 40. Okay, so now save that. Okay, so now I'll render it out, and I won't make you watch this time. So hopefully Blender won't crash on me again. So hold on just a second. Okay, so that rendered out okay. Now as you can see, it kind of looks nice, fine and dandy. The, the ocean starts fading out, you know. Uh, right before the island and kind of phase out into the, the distance back there in the horizon and the tops of the mountains little little blurred out or not blurred out but kind of faded out more than say the the beach line there so that works all nice and fine but if we render with all of our particle systems turned on it doesn't behave quite so nicely so let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here Okay, I stopped rendering halfway through just so you could see what it's doing here. Um, it's still fading out the the mountain and the and the oceans, but uh, the particle emitter they don't the particle system doesn't play well with the mist fall off. So there is a way around it. We just have to tell it not to render the mist settings in the render window, but we still need to give it the render the the mist information the depth that it's that it's using so come down here under our render layers down to mist and go ahead and check that and then we'll go ahead and uh, I got to save often now since I crashed earlier uh, now we'll go ahead and render the, out the full scene and make sure that's selected and then it'll render that into the information and then we can get into the compositor and and then use it to our advantage that way so I'll go ahead and let this render out and I'll be right back 
Okay, so that's all rendered out. And as you can see, the mist settings are no longer in effect. Uh, but since we had that checked, they, it did keep the information in the render buffer. So if we split our window over here, or it's already split if we just go to this one over here. Go up to our node editor, and we're still in the texture settings from when we used for the island in part one. So if we go to our this, uh, this, the scene nodes right there, and go ahead and turn on use nodes. Go ahead and turn on backdrop so we can see what we're doing. And if we just kind of hit our play button, it'll pop that image in there. Okay, and then also we need to add a viewer node so we can see it in the background here. So we'll split that up to there. Okay, let's make that. Actually, let's go and merge these two together like so. And now, as you can see, normally uh, in your compositor render layers, you only have image alpha and Z. But since we checked this mist over here when we rendered, boom, it's set in here too. Now, if you click on this and drag it over to there, you can see a visual representation of what the mist is in, in, in shrouding. So you can edit that, uh, the difference, you can edit that by going to add converter color ramp. And we'll pop that in there. And if you ch bring the white up, it makes the white more white and goes further back. And then the black, well, if it'll let me grab it, grab it, there it goes. You can bring the, the, the back of the mist all the way up. So you can see it eventually start fading out the, the mountain too, like so. So that'll give you a little bit of control there. Um, so now what we want to do is use a... Uh, a color mix and we're gonna put that up in here to where the image of the island is going to be on the second spot there and then uh, for right now let's you, we could just go with the solid white color here but I'm gonna go ahead and add an input RGB and that's gonna be almost the same color just a soft light bluish color about like so and we're going to add that to where the white color is and then we're going to change the factor of the mix value here by using our mist settings so we'll grab this image here and go up to factor and then we'll drag the output down to the viewer so we can see what we're doing and you can see that it fades that out quite nicely this kind of gives it that mist effect but it also affects the particle system, the rendered particles. So that's a cool, easy way to get that done and make it look nice. So like I said, you can edit the, the fall off of the mist here if you like. So you want to, eh, not that much. So you want to cut part of the island off just a little bit like so. That's how you, that's how you do that. So we'll give it just a little bit, about like so. Okay. And then one other thing that's missing is a nice cloudy background. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to once again go over to our, our uh, cgtextures.com. So let's expand that out and let's type in clouds here in the search there. So I don't have to try to figure out where to go. And let's find some nice puffy clouds that we can put in the background. Uh, kind of like that one. We'll open that one in a new tab. Just middle mouse wheel button click. Scroll down here. Next. Just kind of see what we got here. Yeah, these are kind of nice looking, but I think the sunlight's from the back side instead of where I want. Uh, those might would work, but they're too small, too far away. So. Hmm. Let's, uh, these look okay. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go with these. Let's click on that. Okay, gonna save it to the same spot. DTA one click. Down them all one click. There we go. And let's open up GIMP again. There we go. Still got that grass selected. Go ahead and X that out. File open. And skies. There it is. Okay, just got an embedded color file. Go ahead and convert it. Okay. So, now yeah, this makes an appropriate image. The uh, looks like it's over the ocean part of an ocean. So let's go ahead and crop some of that. About 
like so. Let's see if I can zoom in 100%. Okay. Oh, that is 100%. Ugh. Well, I need a bigger image than that then, so don't save that one. Let's go back to CG textures. Close that out. Okay, well, here's a great big one. Okay, let's do that one. Okay, yeah, there's three different size options. I guess I got the smallest one there. Okay, so that finished. We'll open that one up. This guy's L. I guess that means large. Open that up. And convert the color space. Okay, yeah. So let's crop this in. About like so. Is that 100%? No, it's 50%. Good. So let's go 100%. Yeah, that'll work great. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, now what I'm going to do, so we have a nice different, you know, a, a nice separation from the clouds to the sky. Uh, let's see, I want to grab that layer and move it up just a little bit. Quite a bit, actually. About to there. Okay, then I'm going to come over to my Layers tab. Create a new one. Create a new layer. Yes. And you know, let me cancel that. Let's uh let's pick the color I want to fill it with. So let's grab our eyedropper. Let's make this window a little smaller here. Grab our eyedropper tool right there. And let's pick this color there in the sky. Maybe about that one there. Okay, and now we're gonna go new image and uh, our new layer. And we want to choose, fill it with our foreground color, which is the blue we just selected. Say OK. And let's drag it down, uh, or not drag it, but hit the little down arrow to put it down below the cloud background. And then we'll grab our pink eraser and make the scale a little bit bigger and change the brush to more of a faded out size. There we go. Make it a little, a little bigger then. Oops. Okay. Huh, for some reason it's wanting the erase part of it, not make it white. Let me let me fiddle with the tools here and I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> I think I figured it out. You can imagine my frustration coming from Photoshop to GIMP. Sometimes the tools don't work the same that you would think. So anyways, we'll grab that layer, drag them up. Uh, like so, maybe a little higher. Okay, and now in order to be able to erase it, erase it, I, I guess I have to go new from visible, and then I can erase that one. But this one's the background layer. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new layer here. Foreground color, blue. Okay, now we'll select that guy. Set our eraser tool, and everything's unchecked there. So now I'll make the oh, passive way up there, maybe about 75. And now we'll now we'll brush on there and kind of clean that up. Delete some of these guys. Okay, so let's make it get any bigger than that. Maybe gently start fading some of this out up here, so it's not such a harsh cutoff line. Okay, that'll work. Let's go ahead and do a save as now. And I was doing uh, PNGs before because we needed transparency, but we don't really need it now since it's just the background color. So let's just name it clouds and leave it with the JPG. Save. And export. And quality all the way up to 100. Save. Okay, now I think we're done with GIMP. Okay, so now I'm going to add an input. This one's going to be a texture. Actually, not a texture. Delete that. Add an input image. There we go. Make it a little bigger. Hit the open there. And textures, clouds, open. And there we go. Okay. So now the reason I did before I made this color instead of just using the color up there is because I want to mix these two together uh, as and put that as the background image. So let's do this. Add color mix. I guess I could have done it in here. But in any case it works. So we'll add that together and then you can see that it's putting that as the background nicely. However, 
if we go alt V or V actually you can zoom in and out of your your window here um, you can see that the sky is a lot bigger than the rendered image so what we need to do is add a distort scale go and drag that up into that line there automatically connects it and under relative click that and go to render size and boom makes it nice excuse me makes it nice and uh, part of the image so um, right now our clouds are the you know perfectly the way we brought them in and I was wanting to mix them with with this soft blue color there so let's the factor down a little bit you can see them start to fade out some maybe we change that from the bright blue to maybe a bit more gray okay there we go and another thing we can do right here on our color ramp for our mist settings instead of it being a solid white to black we can add one more uh, color in there if you hit control it'll add another line in there then we can grab this guy make this guy a little bit a little bit brighter and that'll make our fall off a little bit smoother there okay so that's uh, that's pretty well it uh, one last thing I'll tell you uh, before we call it a day all done all done as if if you look closely we alt V in here there's a, a little line outlining the, the mountain right there and, and I don't like that uh, because well it shouldn't be there uh, the reason the way to get rid of it um, is to in your render settings come down here let's collapse the layers there uh, under anti-aliasing set full sample and we'll go ahead and hit 5 there render a little bit faster I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now um, one thing to keep in mind is once you have all your stuff set up it's a good idea to to, to render out and get everything set up here uh, without the full sample and then when you're all done then hit full sample then do one final render because if you render full sample as you're messing with it uh, you're gonna lose your anti-aliasing and it'll be really pixelated there along the edges and things like that so um, ah, I keep hitting the wrong button there we go okay so we'll do one final render just so we can see it without the white line right there and you know one thing I'm gonna do before we before I before I quit there is the the ocean waves seem to be a little too big now so let's edit that really quick like go to 3d view here select our ocean material settings there we go texture and let's make that cloud setting a little bit smaller 0 0.005 probably good okay so I'll go ahead and save that and again full samples turned on because we're all set with our with our compositing and we'll hit render and we'll call it done and we'll see what it looks like so be right back okay and there's our finished island like I said uh, we turn on full sample and you don't see that line there anymore so there you go and the island the ocean waves look a little bit better so I'm gonna go ahead and save this well this island part three oops went to the wrong folder somehow uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. island I just got a new mouse it's kinda squirrely I think so we'll call it, hit that part three results go ahead and save that now since we have that saved let me show you what happens if we if we tweak any of this. So keep 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 a good eye on there. See how it's nice and smooth along the edges. If we even mess with the color ramp for our mist settings, boom. See how that happens? Kills all your anti-aliasing. So once again, you, you can render it out and mess with it without the full sample turned on. And once you get everything set the way you want, then turn it on and render. Or you'll you're gonna have to render it again anyway. So um so yeah, there we go. I'll go ahead and open up the the good looking one. Uh, if I can find it over here. Okay, here it is. Alright, so zoom in there. So that, that turned out pretty decent, I think. It doesn't look exactly like the the original source that I was showing you, but uh, it's pretty close. So that's gonna do it for this island set tutorial series. So thanks for watching. And I'd love to see the islands you guys come up with. So just, you know, rent them out, make them, and put them down in the, in the gallery section. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.